Bro, I ain't gonna lie, your hair was very difficult to fade. Sorry, bro, I was born with it. It's cool, bro, because I was able to achieve that fade by doing these steps. First thing is to examine the head shape. And right now I can tell that the back is pretty flat and it's kind of disconnected from the top. So the objective is to build up some more weight within this area, which is why I'm gonna go ahead and deep bulk with the number two. Digging in at the bottom, but as I get to, digging in at the bottom, but as I get past the occipital bone, I'm gonna start tilting my clipper outwards. And that's really helping me keep that weight near this area. And it's also helping me blend into the top already. And this is one of the things that's really gonna help you fade, because if you can go ahead and knock out this part at the beginning, then you're not really gonna to have to worry about coming back and fading into the top anymore. So now I switch from the number two into the number three guard, and that's just to really finish blending into the top. Now whenever it comes to this type of haircuts and this hair texture, don't be intimidated. It's the same thing as any other haircut. You're just gonna keep on going with your clipper, lever closed, and going right off the head with it. But with this area faded in already, I can go ahead and create my first initial guideline. And whenever you're doing this part, go ahead and knock down the sideburns to make sure to ask. You always wanna make sure you consult with them and make sure they don't wanna keep it. Cause there was one time where I straight up took them off and my dude was mad. Not on him, but somebody else. And he was mad, he was trying to grow them out, but I just got in the zone and chopped them off. So always be sure to ask. Notice how on the back, I'm using the corner of the blade to really be able to create that curve shape that I want to. And once again, we know that we're trying to create weight within this area. That's why I went ahead and dropped it down with this foundation line as well. That way we can have the same consistent shape going throughout the head. And whenever you're using the trimmers, make sure to lay them flat and tilt them in a little bit. That way you can grab as much hair as possible. Because the last thing you want to do is leave any hair behind. And of course, you always want to use a little baby brush to really be able to remove all the excess hair. That way you can really see what you're doing. And whenever it comes to using the babbler shaver, you don't want to go all the way up to the line. You want to stay right beneath it. That way it can be easier to fade out. I'm stopping about a quarter inch before I get to the line. And right after that, I'm gonna go back in with the balance. This time using the top blade, place it on the line that I created with the shimmer, and just go down. And what that's doing is really softening up that line for me. Now in this part is where it's crucial. I'm gonna take the number one guard, and I'm gonna make, and I'm gonna make a pretty wide guideline. And the reason why I made this guideline so wide and went about halfway up his head is because that's going to be my initial stopping point. So now I have point A, point B, and point C. Meaning, all I have to do now is fade out this bottom section. And after this bottom section is faded out, I just got to fade out this top section. So now with the lever post, I'm going to begin right at the bottom, only using the corner of the blade to start erasing that line. Initially, that's not going to take it all the way. That's where we're going to open the lever by a quarter inch and go a quarter inch above that first initial line again. And I'm going to keep on repeating the same process, going up about a quarter inch at a time until my lever is all the way completely open. And that really helped create some gradiency within that section. And of course, if you still have a little distinct line at the bottom, go in with your trimmer and just point cut into it. Notice how I only worked in this small section first, and that's how I'm gonna be working throughout the whole side of the head. Working in small sections, that way I can't really control where I wanna place the fade at. And now behind the ear, I'm simply gonna get that out the way using my pinky. That way my hand's not in the way either. Using my pinky, get out the way, and I'm gonna begin doing the same process all over again. Working all the way to the back, but working it within this section. This time, I'm gonna use the fading down technique. So I'm starting with my lever all the way open now and close it a quarter inch at a time. And the more that I close it, I'm not gonna be going up as high within that section anymore. And that way, whenever the blade is fully closed, I should be at the very bottom of that section now. 
Either way is good, it just depends on preference, what you prefer. I use this technique sometimes whenever I'm just in the zone and instead of having to start at the bottom work up, I just feel like it's easier to just go ahead and start with the lever open and start working down. Like I said, it's all preference. So now with this bottom half completely faded out, now with this bottom section faded out, and we know that we use the number two to fade into the top on this top section, I'm gonna begin erasing that line right in between using the one and a half card. The lever's gonna be about halfway closed. And I'm only gonna be using the first three teeth of the guard to really be able to dig in between each individual hair and start fading it out. One of the main things you always gotta keep in mind on this as well, you always wanna brush the hair back down into the natural position. So whenever you go in with the clippers, what the clippers are doing is just pushing the hair out the way and most of the time it pushes it up to where the blade doesn't end up cutting them more. So right here you can tell that the hair's been pushed but it's not being cut. So it's very important to always keep a comb in your hand. That way you can comb the hair back down into its natural position and make sure you're cutting every single little bit of it. Of course, that one and a half card didn't completely take it out. That's why I'm going in with the number one now. Using the same technique. And once again, this is not going to completely take it out. All this is doing is softening up the line right in between. Really prepping it. That way, whenever we get down to the half guard, that'll completely take it out this time. And the reason why I knew that the half guard was going to be able to take it out was because whenever I faded out this bottom section, I was using a no guard with the lever all the way open which is equivalent to a half guard. That's why it's very important to really understand what each measurement guard is gonna do. And I'm just gonna continue using the same method all throughout the back as well. Whenever you have a proper system in place, your execution is gonna be a lot easier because you already know what each step is gonna be doing and what you're gonna be doing next. If you go into a haircut blindly, not knowing what to do on the steps, then of course it's gonna take you a lot longer and it's gonna be a lot tougher for you to be able to execute. That's why it's very important to have a good system in place and know exactly what you're gonna be doing before you actually even start doing a haircut. All right, so at the beginning, whatever I'm doing the top, I'm not gonna pick it out. Literally, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop a lot of the excess hair down. And just kinda of like whenever you're debulking at the beginning of a haircut, that's all we're doing right now. Just go ahead and get rid of all the hair and afterwards, once you get majority of the bulk down, I'm gonna go back in with the pick, pick it out, and I already did one side of this head, so I'm gonna be using this side as a guideline to do the rest of it. And it's very important that whenever you do this, make sure you have the clipper as flat as possible. You don't really want to tilt your blade in, because then you're really gonna run the risk of digging in too far and giving them a ball patch. So just lay down flat and just follow the same guideline throughout the whole thing. Of course, the side's are very crucial too. This is where most of the shape is gonna be created. You really wanna make sure to knock this side down as well. And the way I'm doing this is by literally putting it in this angle instead of just flat. That way I can start creating more weight towards the top. But I have majority of the bulk taken down. I'm gonna go back in again and just really pick it out to get some of the hairs that I might have missed. Kind of feel like this is one of the mistakes a lot of barbers make. They'll go in at once, debulk, and give it the shape. But if you don't go back and pick it out again, you'll see that there's still so much hair that was just built up underneath that you weren't able to get. So always go back and re-pick it out. Now whenever it comes to doing some of this edge up, I really want to create separation from the bottom and the top, but I don't want to create too much separation, just a little bit. And the main reason I want to do that is to really ensure that I'm not pulling the hair from up here and coming down. Because if I ended up taking this hair and combing it down, then that would be a big chunk of his hair missing. And I've seen that too many times, so literally right on the edge, just find his little baby hair. And you can see how much hair I'm actually getting. His hairline starts right here, and his curly hair starts up here. So I'm really not going to be digging into none of that. And just to really be able to cut it down smoothly, I'm going to deep bulk just a little bit, but just on the edge. Once again, I don't want to cut too much off and create too much of a separation. So just being right at the edge, smoothing out the little hairs, and starting in the middle, 
I'm just gonna work my way to one side first, placing half the blade on the line that I already created and half the blade on the new line that I want to create and just tapping in and sliding this way. And that's really gonna help me reset and go back with the rhythm to create a straight line. And for the C cup, I'm gonna place my finger on its face. That way I can have good balance and stabilize the trimmer better. And I'm gonna make my first line at the top. And then make my second line at the bottom. And those two are gonna be my reference points. So with this line in and this line done, all I have to do now is connect the dots. And I'm gonna do that by using the corner of my blade to really be able to create that curved shape that I'm looking for. And just like that, we got a nice C cup. Now with the edge up in place, now we can start to really see all the little imperfections all throughout the head. And we're just gonna detail just a little bit to really make it as smooth as possible. And it should be done. And by following those steps, that's how you're gonna be able to execute this difficult fade that he was born with. Let's see what we got, man. Here you go. Yeah. For real. A little too long, huh? But how's that right there? Yes, sir. Good? Perfect. 